So today's topic is acclimatization. So in this topic we are going to discuss what happens to the respiratory system when we go to the high altitude. So the primary function of the cardiovascular system, respiratory system and the blood, the primary function is to deliver the oxygen from lung to the tissues and back from carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide from tissue to the lung. This is the primary function of the cardiovascular system, respiratory system and blood. Clear? So when we go to high altitude, what happens to the partial pressure of oxygen? Partial pressure of oxygen, it goes down. So before studying detail about the high altitude, first I'll explain what happens in the low, low altitude, that is at the sea level. <coughs> so at sea level, partial pressure of uh, atmospheric pressure is 760, 760 millimeter of mercury at the sea level. Clear. Total partial, total pressure is 760. So the individual pressure, you know, 21% out of this, 21% is of oxygen. Clear. So around 159 millimeter of mercury is the pressure exerted by the oxygen at the <coughs> sea level. Clear. So first I will explain what is the partial pressure of this is uh, left heart. I have drawn left heart and this is right heart. <coughs> the partial pressure of oxygen is this is arterial side and this is venous side. Arterial side, what is partial pressure of oxygen? 95. It is 95 mm Hg. So what is partial pressure of carbon dioxide? 40. Yes, it is 40. And in venous side, partial pressure of oxygen is 40. That is mm Hg. And partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 46 mm of mercury. Clear. And what is the content per 100 ml? Oxygen content per 100 ml is 20 ml per 100 ml. You know how this 20 ml came? <coughs> 1 gram, gram of hemoglobin will carry 1.34 ml of oxygen. 1 gram will carry 1.34 ml. So in a normal what is normal level? 15 grams. In 100 ml of blood, we will be having 15 grams of hemoglobin. So 15 into 1.34 is approximately 20.1 ml. Clear. So in 100 ml of, suppose if you take a 100 ml of blood, clear. How much oxygen is carried? 20 ml of oxygen is carried here. Clear. So out of 20 ml, so how much it is delivered? 5 ml. 5 ml is delivered to the tissues. So 20 ml is carrying. And in venous side, what is the content of oxygen? <coughs> 15 ml. Clear. 15 ml per 100 ml. So 20 ml is of oxygen is carried to the tissue. 5 ml is delivered. And 15 ml of oxygen is going back to the lung. Clear. And what is the <coughs> hemoglobin saturation? Here, here it is 100% saturated hemoglobin, and here it is 75% saturation. Here. So next, what is the partial pressure of oxygen, alveolar oxygen? 100 ml. 100 ml. 100 ml. 100 ml. And carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is 40. 40 mm of Hg. This is alveolar oxygen and alveolar carbon dioxide. Clear? So now, uh, what happens if you go to high altitude, the partial pressure of atmospheric oxygen, it reduces. Normally, partial pressure of atmospheric oxygen at sea level is 159 mm of mercury. So when you go high, what happens? Partial pressure of oxygen level in atmosphere it goes down. If partial pressure of atmosphere it goes down, then alveolar partial pressure of atmosphere gases will also go down. It will be less than 100. 
so here it will not be 159 it will be maybe it may be 100 and then hg it depends upon the altitude level here so if this is if atmospheric oxygen is less alveolar oxygen will be less clear and what will happen here arterial oxygen will also go down normal level is 95 mm mercury so if it is less than 100 so here also it will be arterial yes. oxygen will be less than 100 clear suppose if the partial pressure of oxygen it goes less than 60 clear so uh, what is this internal carotid artery and external carotid artery clear so here what is present here carotid bodies and carotid bodies and aortic bodies are which are the peripheral chemoreceptors which detect the partial pressure of oxygen clear so when partial pressure of oxygen is less this chemoreceptor will sense the partial pressure of oxygen level if the partial pressure of oxygen is less than 60 then carotid body will send information Way. to which now it will send the information to central nervous system okay so what is this this is central chemoreceptor which is present in the pons clear and here is the inspiratory center dorsal respiratory group <clears throat> so again i repeat when you go to high altitude partial pressure of oxygen will go down if atmospheric oxygen is less it will alveolar oxygen will also go down if alveolar oxygen is going down arterial oxygen will also go down normal is 95 mm of mercury if it is less than 60 if the arterial or oxygen partial pressure is less than 60 carotid body will give information to the <coughs> receptor what is this receptor central chemoreceptor that is peripheral chemoreceptor this is central chemoreceptor so now central chemoreceptor will stimulate the inspiratory center that is dorsal respiratory group and this dorsal respiratory group through phrenic nerve this is phrenic nerve which supplies the diaphragm <coughs> and through intercostal nerves it supply the intercostal muscles because of this so what do you call this if partial pressure of oxygen in artery if it is going down the, the name the condition is called as It's called as a hypoxemia, not hypoxia. It's a <coughs> hypoxemia. What is hypoxemia? The partial pressure of oxygen it goes down in arterial blood. The term is called as hypoxemia. So if the now the blood is bringing less oxygen or more oxygen? Less. Less oxygen. So now the tissue is receiving less oxygen. So this is called as hypoxia. Clear. So the difference between hypoxemia and hypoxia is hypoxemia is partial pressure of oxygen is less in arterial blood. That is called hypoxemia. If the oxygen delivery is less to the tissue, that condition is called as hypoxia. Clear. So because of this hypoxemia. what happens the central nerve the, the information goes to the <coughs> central nervous system and what will happen it will result in hyperventilation clear so now in from the central nervous system is giving information to through phrenic nerve this is phrenic nerve this is intercostal nerve and what will happen the respiration will become more that is hyper it will result in hyperventilation the response is hyperventilation the rate of respiration is increased clear so now this is 
having both advantage and disadvantage. <clears throat> what is the advantage? Is if the person is breathing, if the person is hyperventilating, the system is trying to, the lung is trying to mix with more atmospheric air. Okay. If you are breathing more number of times, what will happen? The lung is trying to mix with atmospheric air and then trying, it is trying to increase the partial pressure of oxygen level in the lung. Are you clear? So what will happen? Now the partial pressure of oxygen will slightly go up. This is an advantage. So what, what is the disadvantage? Disadvantage is the atmospheric carbon dioxide. What is the atmospheric carbon dioxide level? It's very less. The atmospheric carbon dioxide level is very less. What is the real drive of respiratory system? <clears throat> what is the real drive of respiratory system? What is carbon dioxide level is in arterial blood? 40. 40 millimeter of mercury. This carbon dioxide, imagine this is blood brain barrier. This carbon dioxide that is normal carbon dioxide level in arterial blood. Normal carbon dioxide level is 40 in arterial blood. So this carbon dioxide will cross the blood brain barrier and it mixes with water to form H2CO3 carbonic acid this carbonic acid dissociate into hydrogen ion and bicarbonate clear so this hydrogen ion it stimulates the central chemoreceptor and they are the real drive for inspiration now you all are breathing quietly so who is driving you to, who is telling you to breathe? This carbon dioxide. Normal carbon dioxide, it, through arterial, I am talking about arterial carbon dioxide, it enters the brain or it crosses the brain, blood brain barrier, mixes with water and it dissociates into, it forms a carbonic acid, it dissociates into hydrogen and bicarb. This is continuously stimulating the inspiratory center and inspiratory muscles it gets contracted and inspiration occurs. So what happens now you see in high altitude partial pressure of atmospheric oxygen is less clear. So now because of hypoxemia the respiratory rate has been Increased. I have told in one way it is. It's, it has an advantage. What advantage? Alveoli is trying to mix with more atmospheric oxygen. But at the same time, in atmosphere, carbon dioxide level is less. So what will happen here in the alveoli? What is normal carbon dioxide level? 40. 40 millimeter of mercury. This is carbon dioxide level normal. So now this carbon dioxide level will go down. Clear. Imagine the carbon dioxide level has become 30 millimeter of mercury. Why? Because of atmosphere. Because atmosphere oxygen is carbon dioxide is less. So alveolar carbon dioxide will also go down. So if here in alveoli carbon dioxide is 30, what will happen to arterial carbon dioxide? It will also go down. So here in So normally, if it is partial pressure of carbon dioxide, normally it is 40. Why it is 40? Because in alveoli it is 40, normally. In high altitude, where the lung is trying to mix with more atmospheric air, the carbon dioxide level in alveoli goes down. If here the in alveoli carbon dioxide level is going down, in artery, or artery also, carbon dioxide level will go down. Clear. Now what happens? The in central nervous system, availability of carbon dioxide is less. Clear. If availability of carbon dioxide is less, 
in the central nervous system then less carbon dioxide will mix with less water to form less carbonic acid and less hydrogen ion and less bicarb ion so the availability of hydrogen ion in the central nervous system it goes down clear if hydrogen ion is going down proton is going down now this drive is lost clear for normal respiration normal carbon dioxide is necessary if carbon dioxide level is going down availability of hydrogen ion will will be going down and that will inhibit or there is an opposing effect in the respiratory drive so this is the disadvantage so hypoxemia is trying to increase the ventilation hypoxia is trying to increase the ventilation hypoxemia driven hyperventilation will be five times normally clear not the respiratory rate will be increased five times if only hypoxemia is driving the central nervous system clear now the respiratory system will not go high or the uh, the respiratory rate hyperventilation will not be completely effective because low carbon dioxide is inhibiting the central nervous system so one is having positive feedback which one is having positive feedback hypoxemia is having stimulating the central nervous system to increase the ventilation clear because of less carbon dioxide now there is an opposing effect which is suppressing the central nervous system so one system is trying to increase hyperventilation or to, uh, to uh, for the hyperventilation so other system is trying to decrease the hyperventilation so what is happening here so who will win five times it has to be increased but now only two times or 2.5 times the respiration is increased because of this opposing effect are you clear till here yes. so now what is happening the respiratory system the hyperventilation has to occur but it is not occurring full fledged because carbon dioxide less carbon dioxide is opposing the hyperventilation clear second is in blood in blood carbon dioxide level in blood also carbon dioxide level is going down, down. down. clear so in the blood same equation i'm repeating here carbon dioxide plus water h2co3 and it dissociate into h plus and by car so in the blood also the carbon dioxide level is going down why the blood carbon dioxide level is less because alveolar carbon dioxide is less 